Peace, what's going on? What's good with everyone? It is a beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon, although this daylight savings time is kind of kicking my butt a little bit. I didn't realize um, the time had switched until like a little bit later in the day. I was just like, what time? Wait, what time is it now? Uh, oh, oh, we sprung forward. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of getting adjusted to this time. I hope everybody else is getting adjusted as well. So I'm just going to wait just a, a second to give some people a time to join in and um, let's get to it. Let's start talking about uh, snagging that Scorpio. That Scorpio. That's why I have on my um, Afro-Cuban All-Stars playing in the background for uh, Team Scorpio. Um, if you know anything about Scorpios, you know that Scorpios are um, very transformative creatures. Scorpios... Um, there's no such thing as the word taboo to a Scorpio. No, you don't say taboo to a Scorpio unless it's something that you're intentionally wanting them to do. Because they're going to be like, taboo? Oh, okay, let me go check that out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, so Team Scorpio. Um, so if there's somebody that you're interested in, it could be their sun, moon, or rising sign. It could be Scorpio. Um, this is this is just some advice as I've been going through. Um, I started out with Sagittarius, uh, with the fire signs. I started out with Sag and Leo and Aries. And then um, I started with the water signs. Um, peace, goddess. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Um, and then I went over to water signs of where I am right now. So last, last night I did Pisces. And today is all about Team Scorpio. So I'm going to give you guys, um, and I have to uh, plug, plug, plug while I'm on here. Just want to plug in this fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Let me give you uh, um, an up close and personal view of um, some of my new stuff that I've been working on with Oshun's Garden. This is one of the pieces that I uh, is inspired by cosplay. So if anybody knows anything about cosplay, and it, about uh, the movement that's going on right now with a lot of uh, black cosplayers who are kind of just stepping out and doing something different. Um, so it's inspired by um, comics, uh, black girls and black guys that like comics, black girls and black guys that like uh, fantasy sci-fi. Um, I'm into that. <laughs> and so instead of uh, being, you know, just being like, oh, well, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm just pulling from everything that's inside of me. And um, this is from Alice in Wonderland. This is the uh, White Rabbit. Um, so, yeah. So, that's that. So, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I think I've bantered enough to give people uh, enough time to join in because I told you guys at 6 o'clock. Look at that. It's 6 o'clock. Let's get it. All right. So Scorpio, so when you're interested, if there's uh, someone that you're interested in that is a Scorpio, the first bit of advice that I can give you in um, pursuing, attracting, and keeping that Scorpio um, is to be open to experimentation. New foods, new cultures, new information, new philosophies, new practices. Scorpio um, is ruled by the eighth house, which is the house of transformation. It can it can mean literally life and death, but it also means just transformative experiences, things that um, things that change you to the point of, uh, you know, in, whenever you come into a new level in your consciousness, you're having to shed off some things. So technically, that's uh, the old you dying, and the new you being reborn. So we're talking about not just literal life and death, but we're talking about major transformation in life. So um, with Scorpio, because that is the house that Scorpio um, is ruled by, that house, the eighth house, that says a lot about Scorpio people. Scorpio people like, there's no such thing, like I said earlier, no such thing as taboo with Scorpio. Don't even use that word. Because with Scorpio, it want, Scorpio wants to experience uh, the zest of life. You know what I'm saying? They want to experience it all. That's how they, that's how they um, 
kind of grow and get ready to go into um, the next level of whatever it is that they're getting ready to transform into is through experience kind of like Sagittarius Sagittarius has that element as well Sagittarius learns from um, experience and Scorpio does as well um, but it transforms in that learning in that knowledge it's not just like a bank whereas Sagittarius is kind of like a bank of experiences no Scorpio actually transforms that's how they uh, kind of, you know, just shed layers and begin new projects and begin new ideas and, and new phases in their life is through experience. So, with your Scorpio, never use the word taboo um, unless you want them to do that thing. <laughs> so, um, within the confines of your relationship, you know, nothing should be taboo. You should keep it uh, to a level of uh, where, you know, that your Scorpio mate is able to talk to you about Whatever it is that they want to try that's new. Whatever it is that they want to do that's new. Maybe, you know, your Scorpio mate is, has been hinting on, you know, maybe picking up a second language or third language or something like that. When you're with the Scorpio, you can't be that person that says, oh, what is she, what does he or she want to do this month? It's always something. What is it? What do they want to do now? What do they want? To, you can't be that way with the Scorpio. You have to be understanding and um, along for that ride within the confines of your relationship. So definitely be open to experimentation. Be open. Remain open. Not just at the beginning of the relationship when you're trying to get that Scorpio's attention, but even once you have that Scorpio. Remain open. Don't ever close up. Don't ever go to go revert back to the point where your Scorpio has to uh, hold and hide all these secret, uh, secret thoughts and fantasies and, and wants and all this kind of stuff, and they can't share it with you. And then what ends up happening? Sure enough, the universe, somebody comes along that they can share all of those things with. And you look around, it's like, where did my, you know, where, what happened to my Scorpio? Oh, you didn't love me. You never loved me. No, it's not that. But um, it was the fact that you weren't allowing them to uh, do the transformative things that's necessary for Scorpio to be happy. Um, again, we're talking about lifelong commitments. We're not just talking about... Uh, crash and burn relationships we're talking about being with someone for forever for the long haul um so yeah be open to experimentation if they want to learn a new language if they want to you know start cooking this month uh start cooking cuban food like baby cuban food where did this come from i'm not you know i'm just putting things out there if they want to do if they start a yoga journey if they start you know, they, if they want to, whatever it is that they want to do, just be a supportive spouse. All right, the next thing I have is to encourage your Scorpio through throughout their mini meta, metamorphosis. I want you to think of your Scorpio as a butterfly. Whereas with physical butterflies, they may only go through one meta metamorphosis. A Scorpio is constantly, 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 constantly going through metamorphosis. So they're going, they're building a chrysalis sometimes, you know, with the, a butterfly, um, it starts off as a caterpillar and then it builds the chrysalis around itself. So that's that level of isolation. Sometimes they may go within uh, for a little while, but when they come out, they're coming out as something new. So encourage your Scorpio throughout the many, 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 many metamorphoses that they're going to go through. That's if your Scorpio has found themselves and, and is open and honest enough with themselves to tell you uh, about those feelings and desires to transform. Now, you may meet somebody that's a Scorpio that may, you know, not be as free and as open to say, you know what, you know, yeah, I kind of want to try this because maybe they've been discouraged so many times in past relationships. Maybe they've been discouraged by their families. Maybe they've been discouraged by, you know, uh, teachers, professors, whoever, people of influence in their lives. What you can do is to help your Scorpio mate 
uh, know that it's okay. Let them know that it's okay to be honest about their feelings. And if there's something that they want to do, if there's a transformation that they want to go through, that you will fully support them in that and that you will be there for them throughout um, and you will be there. And I have be a cushion and support system to show them your loyalty in the relationship. So be a cushion. Be, be that's that's gotta be difficult. That's got. And then for Scorpio to be a water sign, which is already feeling so many different levels of emotion. So not just from themselves, but from others. But and then to add on top of that, remember the constant transformation, co constant transformation, or the desire, even if it's never expressed to you. So even if you know Scorpios and you like. They don't do that. They don't change. They, they're pretty, you know, that's on the surface. We're not talking about, you know, when you're, you're talking about on the surface, they may put on a facade. But deep down inside, that need or that want to transform is, is pretty natural for all Scorpios. So be that mate and that partner to let your Scorpio know that it is safe. Um, and that you're going to be there with them and for them throughout their metamorphosis. All right, the third thing that I have to snagging uh, and attracting and snagging and holding on to your Scorpio of interest is to understand their need to walk completely away from relationships and partnerships that damage them without judgment, okay? Scorpios are notorious for cutting people off, and I'm talking about without warning, <laughs> I'm talking about um, without really an explanation of much of why, you know, they don't, you know, they're notorious for that. Scorpios are notorious for detaching like that. Um, so understand their need to detach from those situations without judging them. So maybe your Scorpio, uh, quit their job. Maybe your Scorpio quit their job and you just, you know, oh my gosh, that's your livelihood. Or maybe they took a pay cut. Maybe they were working one job, but they weren't happy. And they took a pay cut to work another job. And you're just like, oh, that's, that's crazy. That's, and you guys have maybe had some type of point of contention in your relationship. Or maybe there's friction there because of the fact that your Scorpio just walked completely away from something or maybe it's someone maybe it's a relationship maybe it's a, a parent one of their parents uh, maybe it's something um, that you just don't get like well how could you walk away from this person how could you just you know so instead of being judgmental when your Scorpio um, walks away from something or detaches from something, try understanding, try putting yourself in their situation now that you know the science and now that you understand uh, the science of how Scorpios think. Try putting yourself in that situation and, and finding some understanding so you guys can have some common ground. Um, so yeah, save the judgment. If they walk away from something, uh, remember, they are water signs. They are water signs. So if, if if something is bothering them, it's going to be amplified times a thousand to a water sign. Whatever it is. Um, so if they need to detach for their health, allow them to do that. It's not your place to judge them. What it is your place to do is, as, as a supportive spouse is to support their decisions. Is to support their decisions. So find, instead of arguing about it, find the middle ground, find the common ground, and go from there. The next thing that I have, um, the two next things that I have coming up are going to be uh, piggybacking off of Pisces. Because again, water signs, they share similar traits. Just like with fire signs, I, there were a couple that I repeated uh, for all three signs, actually. So this one is going to be a reoccurring one from Pisces, and that is to be a thermostat in your relationship with your Scorpio. Be a thermostat. So um, again, because they are water signs, they feel so many different emotions, not just from uh, internal, but external emotions as well. They kind of, it's like a sponge effect. So it's not that they're trying to feel them, it's just natural. So the best thing that you can do 
uh, to cut down on confusion and arguments and all this at home is to be a thermostat. Try to be as consistent and constant in your own personal emotions as you can. Because there are going to be times where, you know, they when they come home, you know, they're looking for sanctuary from everything that they've been feeling out in the world. So let your home, let, let you all's home space be a place of sanctuary where Scorpio can come in and feel safe and feel and, and, and know that you are going to constantly be set. Like I gave the, the example yesterday of being set to 73 degrees. You're always set to 73. Your Scorpio comes home in a funk. Give them some space. Don't be in their face, you know, asking constantly, you know, what's wrong? What's what's this? What's that? What's the? You don't have to do that. With water signs, sometimes they just need time out alone. So just be understanding of that. And then the next thing that is a carryover from Pisces is to keep your word. Do not make promises that you cannot keep. Do not make promises that you cannot keep or you don't intend on keeping. Don't tell a Scorpio you love them if you do not. Don't really don't tell anybody anybody that, but especially not a Scorpio. <laughs> because you do not want to scorn a Scorpio. Remember, Scorpion, okay? Okay, so they're they're very passionate, and that passion can be either in I, I passionately love you or I passionately hate you. So um, yeah, so make sure that when you're when you're um, in your relationship with your Scorpio that you try to be as solid as you possibly can. And if there's something that you can't do, then don't promise it. Don't promise it to a Scorpio. Don't promise them the moon, and you can't deliver that. Um, so yeah, just keep your word. They're big. Scorpios are also big on trust. They are big on loyalty as well. Next, I have understand their silence. Understand their silence and decode the problem versus constant anger or frustration with their silence. So instead of getting mad at your Scorpio for giving you the silent treatment, because Scorpios are also notorious for the silent treatment when they are mad at you. <laughs> they are notorious for the silent treatment when they are mad at you. So that's the time for you, okay? Remember, somebody's got to be the thermostat. Somebody has to be the thermostat. And we're talking about making it last forever. We're talking about love is not a fantasy. First of all, let's get that idea out of our heads right now. Love is not this fantasy thing like, oh, I fell in love at first sight and he rubs my back and she fixes every meal for me. Every love is, you got to understand, this is human beings are individuals. So it's a matter of you uh, figuring out ways to deal with, with every shade and every color that that person brings to the table because apparently if you're with them they're bringing some good colors some some bright colors they're bringing some things into your life that you really do like now as far as the things that you don't like okay that's where the maturity kicks in to where uh either you or they or both hopefully both um, we'll come to the point of saying, okay, well, let's figure, let's figure this thing out. Let's figure out how to navigate, you know, our differences. So with that being said, understanding their silence, if they're giving you the silent treatment, and, and I'm not saying necessarily that that's a, a, a fair thing to do, but I mean, in, in the event that it does happen, because we all have our times, we all have our times when we get upset, we do different things, we react in different ways. And so with Scorpio, um, the silent treatment is just one of those things you can expect when they're not when they're not too happy with you. So silence is language. Understand that instead of ignoring their silence, which will, which will only make the problem worse, you know, instead of ignoring it as in I'm not dealing with you, I don't have time for this. Why you do do do? Instead of that. Think on why. Think on what's causing the silence. Think on what the issue is. That's why I said decode the problem. 
So it's going to take some critical thinking skills there. I mean, if it's something that you did or they had, you know, a really important family gathering and, they, and you knew it was important to them and you decided not to come. And when you get home, you're getting the silent treatment. Hmm, let's think about it. Why would you be getting the silent treatment? Because you didn't come to the event. You didn't come to the family event and you knew they wanted you there. So fix those issues. Fix, use the silence, the silence as language and understand and decode it so that you can fix the issue. Instead of, uh, again, instead of the other option, which is being constantly angry about it, getting frustrated, you know, um, with the silence. So, um, yeah, definitely that. Understand their silence. Next, I have, um, and this is a carryover from Pisces as well. Understand when and how to give them space. Understand when and how to give your Scorpio mate space. Scorpios need space sometimes. Sometimes, and um, detaching is not necessarily the same thing. Detaching all together from something is different from saying, "Baby, I just, you know, just give me some time to get through." You know, it's just one of them days, like Monica. You know. It's, it, that does not mean, just because your Scorpio is saying that I need space, that doesn't mean that they are detaching. Don't confuse detachment from space, okay? If they're with you, then apparently, you know, they want to be there. They, they love you. They, they have some type of a connection with you. So don't smother, you can't smother a Scorpio. You can't smother them. So, um, and that's if you're, you know, in a long-term relationship. And even if you're trying to attract a Scorpio, I mean, the idea of, uh, let's say you guys are just in the, in the stage of where you're starting to talk on the phone a little bit, you know, kind of feeling each other out. Um, the, what you don't want to do is to smother them in the beginning, really ever, but especially not in the beginning. So if they don't answer the phone, W-I-D, 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 texting them over and over and over and over and over again, you know, um, or constant calling, constant, it, allow them to be the one to, you know, let you know when they're ready to pick up, you know, the communication between you guys and just go from there and don't take their distance personal. Sometimes they just need space. Sometimes they just need space. For whatever reason you know um so just honor that um so yeah so understand when and how to give them space if you're again if you're you know wanting to have that relationship with them but you feel like okay well you know i call him or her and i can't get them on the phone sometimes don't take it personally just give them space just give them space and when they call you or they text you and they pick up, because the Scorpios are great for, for picking up like it's nothing. You know, like we're going to pick up where we left off and it's still, you know, all good. And if you can't deal with that, again, that's compatibility. That goes back to compatibility. If you're not compatible with that, then that may not be the person for you. Okay. So, and the last thing that I have for us um, to kind of think about and to use and again this is about application to apply to our relationships with Scorpio with a, a Scorpio mate is to help them to focus their intensity and passion towards progression one of the one of the blessings about Scorpio is the fact that they're so passionate and um, they're so intense you know what I'm saying? They're very, very, very intense people because um, that's what drives that transformation. That's what drives the transformation. So um, if they be begin a health journey, um, it's amazing to watch their intensity to see how uh, how much they grow and how much they transform. Um, if they're whatever journey that they're on, Scorpios are very intense and they are very driven and dedicated people. But help them because an immature aspect of Scorpio would be to use that intensity towards things that uh, do not benefit them 
um, whether it is, you know, uh, sexual behavior that's not controlled, you know what I'm saying, it's just kind of wild and um, different things like that, whatever it is, whatever, 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 it can turn to obsession and um, like overeating that could turn to obesity. So they love things when, when they really are tuned into something, it can become an obsession. So you as the Scorpio mate can be there to just be a balancing piece for them. So to make sure that it does not turn into something that is unhealthy for them. So making, taking that intensity and that passion and um, continuing just to, you know, kind of turn them in, 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 in a good and positive direction for their lives. Something that is going to progress them, whether, whether it be personally or financially or um, business or um, anything, career, uh, home. Uh, whatever it is, um, so helping them, being that component to help them to focus their intensity uh, so that it does not become something that is um, unhealthy. So that is the last bit that I had. Um, I hope that this information helps you in your relationships and your pursuit of that Scorpio man or woman out there. Um, they Again, Scorpios are amazing people. Scorpio people are um, amazing people. And that transformative energy, oh my goodness, is so inspiring to watch a Scorpio just in their prime, just doing, uh, doing it, um, transforming, being unafraid. Um, so if you know a Scorpio and uh, you know things that they keep inside, things that they may be holding, holding on to help them to come out of the shell a little bit that can be something um to connect you to that person that you're attracted to so maybe really finding out more about them internally and pulling that out so they can begin that transformative process because they have the intensity and they have the power inside of them but if they haven't realized it um you know that can be you know kind of detrimental to them and, and that can lead to different things like depression and anxiety and all this all these other issues so um yeah definitely do that and um i will talk to you guys a little bit later on i will have i will be following up with cancer cancer will be next and um i look forward to talking to you guys all right peace